is the story about Jean Charbonneau. Jean Charbonneau was known by many names to many different people. Jean d'Arc Assaf was born on March 29, 1923 to Selimia Boud and Niemi George Assaf. She grew up in Rouen looking after her four younger siblings since her mom passed away at such a young age and her dad ran a clothing store. Her school friends called her Alice George and she has answered to Jeannie, Jean, Aunt Jeannie, City, Mom and Toots by our dad. <laughs> Jean was a stubborn one. She declined to go along with an arranged marriage that her father was setting up and married Guy J. Charbonneau, a Frenchman no less. This opened the door for her younger sisters to marry whoever they chose. Once they were married, they moved to Shibugamu and had two lovely daughters, Diane and Carol. Yes, I did say lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Dad got a job with Naranda Mines and off to Naranda we went in or about 1966. We lived there until 1979 when both Diane and I got married and Dad transferred to Toronto. Once he retired, they settled in Timmins in their very first owned home. Jean received a note at this time from Amanda asking her to enjoy your time in Timmins, but not spend too much time with Paul. <laughs> I, I still have that note. <laughs> Jean kept busy looking after her family as well as volunteering with several organizations. Girl Guides of Canada, Blessed Sacrament Church Auxiliary, North York Hospital Auxiliary, The Lord's Kitchen, and Trefoil. Trefoil is a group of old Girl Guide leaders. We made crafts for Meals on Wheels and we did a walk of life for cancer. Jean loved to go to the cottage and had to help out doing whatever it was we were doing. She would clean windows, cook meals, and even stack wood. Mitch took a video of her sweeping the path to the outhouse back in the day. And years later, she loved to sit by the campfire where she'd eat the s'mores that Jess prepared for her. Her face covered in marshmallows. She was happy. <laughs> She enjoyed her boat rides in the afternoon, sitting back with Sadie, both taking naps. And I have photos of that as well. <laughs> Jean loved her family and spent much time with them. She bragged constantly about her grandchildren, Paul, Amanda, David, and Jessica, since of course there were none better than hers. <laughs> she loved you for more than anything. She also loved her son's son-in-laws, Glenn and Mitch. And every time she saw a photo of her great-granddaughter, Charlotte, she would speak to her and kiss the photo. When she visited Diane, or if she was at my place, her favorite line was, what can I do? She was always great to peel and cut vegetables or sweep. Diane would save her ironing for her. <laughs> she loved to help. She also loved to sit out on the deck with Glenn and sip a gin and tonic, listening to country music. Jean grew up amid her father's huge garden, and her love of gardening grew from this. Get the pun? <laughs> Jiddy grew grapes in his garden, and with this she made wonderful Lebanese dish of stuffed grape leaves. She cooked many traditional Lebanese dishes that we and all of our friends love. Right, Darren? Man Sufi! <laughs> <laughs> she also had a garden in she also had a garden in her yard, and she taught Diane and I how relaxing and rewarding a garden can be. She always helped us plant our garden every year, well into her 90s. Mm -hmm. She loved being with people and had many friends and many adventures. Pat, her neighbor daughter, spent a lot of time with her shopping, out for coffee or lunch, even having a beer on the deck. Nat, another good friend, would always visit and take her places as well. Concerts in the park, dinner at Nat's residence. Pat and Nat would also take her to Gillies to feed the ducks or the mall for lunch or coffee. She cherished these friendships and the time that they spent together. Number three, Karen. Karen <laughs> always brought joy to Jean. She loved her energy and they always laughed. She had many adventures in New Listard when we went touring and visiting and having tea parties and eating cheese. <laughs> Number four, Marjorie. Marjorie never came empty handed. Jean and Marjorie always enjoyed a glass or two of wine while visiting. She loved her shopping trips with Marjorie as well. Never a dull moment. Jean loved her siblings and they kept in touch by phone on a regular basis. Ernie, Mary, George, and Olga. They had many opportunities to visit even though they lived in different areas of Ontario and Quebec. It was always a great joy to see them together laughing and having fun. The years seemed to melt off of them as they shared stories and giggles. Jean loved to cook and had an open door policy. 
Everyone was welcome in her home and at her table. She hated that anyone should be alone and encouraged our friends to always come over. We had many a Christmas dinner where an extra plate was set on the table and an extra Christmas stocking was stuffed in a hurry. She made everyone feel loved. I realized what an impact she had on people when friends that I have known for years had different memories of her. My girl guides remembered her as the oatmeal chocolate chip lady because she used to bake those cookies every time that we, we had an event. And one friend remembered her as a soup lady from back in my days at OPK, uh, Gorman Parents for Kids. Jean would always make a pot of soup for our fundraisers and that's back when Paul was in high school. She lived in her beloved home at 148 Cayuga until she was 95 years old. She did not want to leave and heartbreakingly we moved her to the Georgian residence. She was in a beautiful double room suite where she was treated very well. Both the staff and residents loved their genie. She was there until the end at 97 years old. I have jotted down a few of the memories and stories that I have of her and I'm sure there are many, many more. I invite you to share your favorite memory or say a few words as we say goodbye. Actually, Jean did not like the word goodbye. She always said so long since it meant we would see each other again. So long, Siti, until we meet again. Allah arat. <laughs>